Hello, everyone. Oh, my. Let me get it. So there we go. Hi, everyone. I'm Elizabeth Hefner, Sapphire Ambassador. And I'm here with my dear friend, Charla Nelson. She's a gold ambassador. We've been friends for over 20 years and went to PT school together. And she is was the matron of honor in my wedding. And we just have been like, I don't know, what do you call it? Um, I'm thinking Anne of Green Gables over here. So we've been just able to pick up where we left off if we hadn't, if it'd been a while between communication. And she's just one of my dear friends. And I'm so happy to have her doing plexus with us and with me and leading book clubs with me. It makes it so much more fun. So we are on chapters 10 and 11 of The Magic of Thinking Big. And I really love chapter 10. I thought this was so perfect, um, the getting into the action habit. So just getting into action. And, you know, there's a lot of dreams and a lot of desires, a lot of people that have this, oh, that would be nice. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. But it's because of a lack of action. And he says, you know, there's plenty of room at the top. And that's so true. And I never really thought about that statement too much until like I was reading, rereading today. I listened to the chapters and I was skimming the chapters and listened to them again. I was reading again to prepare. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that really means like there's not that many people at the top. Like there's plenty of room at the top. And I always thought that as, well, there's plenty of room. That means there's room for me. Let's do it. Um, not, not that many people are up there because it's hard to get there or something like that. And I will say though, with Plexus, that there truly is plenty of room at the top. There is a culture of one Plexus. I mean, there are Facebook groups of, you know, Instagram stories, ideas, graphics, stuff like that, of people, just all of us coming together outside of our big team, um, outside of Rock Your Purpose. And truly, when you look at how many people are diamonds and what there's a variety of people that are diamonds and it really shows that there is room at the top for us and that it really is doable um, when you get the action behind it. So what is often missing is just the ability to get things done. Um, and there's so many ideas that probably are out there that haven't been put into action. And so there isn't that amazing product available yet because someone has an idea, but they just don't act on it. I mean, you think like baby food, toothpicks, frisbees, gum, sticky notes, like these are just ideas that somebody thought of and put into action and, and made it into an actual product. And that's, it just, I was kind of, I was kind of Googling to see if I could find some that were funny, um, but they weren't, it wasn't that good. <laughs> My quick Google search wasn't that good. You can Google on your own. Um, and then just the two classes that we have of people, there's actors, the act, I'm not going to say it how he says, there's the doers and the postponers. So there's the ones that just get in action, the ones that are waiting, waiting for the perfect moment, waiting for, okay, when my life calms down, then I'll have a baby. Oh, when my life calms down, then I'll go to the gym. When my life calms down, then I'll teach the kids this thing or that thing, you know? And there really is no perfect time for most things. Um, I know that I started working out last September, right after Mexico, right after we lost my father-in-law in the middle legit of a whole first floor remodel, including having no kitchen. Um, but I went and was like, well, I mean, what do I, you know, why not, why not push myself into a good habit? It's not going to get any easier or better, or any different if I just continue to put it off. And I'm so glad that I did that. I've I talk about it all the time, but I love my gym. <laughs> um, and then he just gave some examples about the guy that just waited and waited and waited to get married. And here he is trying to have all this like legal documentation drawn up of how, where they'd go to church and where they were going to do this. And just, it had to be so perfect and dinner has to be on the table at five o'clock, whatever. I mean, he just was so specific and so perfect about what his expectations were that it was just completely unrealistic. And I think sometimes we do that to ourselves, like, oh, this isn't a perfect post. So I'm just going to delete it. Or this isn't the perfect message to send to my friend. And so I'll just delete it. And instead of trusting that people are our friends 
and they will hear our hearts. If we're sharing from our hearts, it doesn't matter if it's not always the perfect words or the perfect post or the perfect message. Um, and you're never going to say the wrong thing to the right person. So we need to kind of get out of our own way. Right. Um, and then he talked about the guy, the couple that was wanting to buy a home and all their friends wanted to buy a home, but they decided, okay, what's our plan? Okay. This is how much money we need. Let's try a private loan. Let's let me talk to my boss and I'll put some initiative and do some extra work for extra money. And I mean, gosh, that story is so inspiring. They were so like, we can do this. Let's find a way. Let's find a way. And if I had a babysitter even that showed up and said, I would love to really help you clean out the game closet and do like saw a need in my home and said, I'd like to help you with those things. I'm available at, at these times. Is that something you're open to? I'd be like hot diggity dog. Heck yeah. Like you saw something that we're struggling with and in, in our flow or whatever, and you're taking the initiative, making yourself available. Yeah, I will pay you, you know? Um, absolutely. So I think as, as employers, I think people would really, they really look up to the people that are wanting to go the extra mile and work and fulfill those needs. So, and then he talks about starting your own business. And what I have to say about that is Plexus is the easiest business you will ever start. People can start their business for $10 because when you join in as a VIP and you upgrade to ambassador, you don't pay the ambassador membership fee until that annual renewal. So for $10, for $10, you can make $462 this month, right? Unsinking believable. We all need to go live in our stories tomorrow and talk about that. I'm going to challenge myself there. Um, and we have so much at our fingertips with, with Plexus. Um, a quote that stood out to me was success shuns the man who lacks ideas. And I was like, wow, that was really good. Like just do something right. And we can use action to cure our fear and gain confidence. I mean, think about this as we're raising our kids, like okay, I know that you're nervous to ride your bike or whatever it is. So I'm right here with you. I'm, if you just let them be afraid, then it's going to be even harder to get them to even sit on the seat, you know, um, and try that next thing or try the new thing. And I think that is the other beauty, beauty that we see in Plexus. When we help people share right away, it takes away that anticipation, that fear of sharing because they think, well, Elizabeth does this, this, and this. And people think that, what I do is something they can't do, or they have this bloated view of what I'm actually doing versus what I'm doing or whatever the case is. They kind of, you know, again, we can get into our own heads. And so eliminating that, that time frame, making that time frame shorter is going to help. And um, the longer we wait, the more fear. He talked about the paratroopers and if they didn't jump on their second time out, then they were done as a paratrooper. Like they're done. Like we're, not, we're, we're we'll have to do nothing short than push you out, and that's not going to go well, right? Um, and he really talks, you know, fake it till you make it, kind of like send one message. You don't know what message to send. Send one message. For myself, when I my brain is busy and full of life and things happening, like I'd have to do something and. I'll start folding the laundry. I'll go put laundry in. I'll start mopping the floor. I'll get the dishes done. Like I just have to do something. And then it helps calm my brain because I'm accomplishing something. And I think that goes either way. Like he really talks like, just do something that's easy and repetitive, mechanical. Jenny's over there folding laundry, like just fold the laundry because you're accomplishing something and you see your stack of piles of folded stuff grow and your messy basket diminish like that trigger something in us that's showing accomplishment and it does help to calm our brain where we are designed to work we're wired to work and accomplish something right that's how god made us and so as we're seeing that happen then you can put that next step into a plan okay i need to send out five messages today when is a good time to do that okay i have this 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 going on right so here I'm going to make a plan for that to happen. And then also like, this is where that time blocking comes into play, brain dumping, just writing down our list of everything. And, you know, I had this 
I got out of the habit of brain dumping and writing down this whole to-do list. And I was like, okay. And I spent a weekend kind of not spending a ton of time, but clearing off my desk and clearing off my space and writing down all the things that I needed to do. And I tell you what, it really did like clear my brain out. And so that was just, I was like, oh my gosh, Elizabeth, like, why did you get away from this habit? You know, um, getting our to-do list done, getting our IPA sheets printed or in a digital format, using a, the Doe app that keeps track of everything, using your planner, whatever it is. Sometimes I, during di different stages of my business, I have literally written out like all these people that I can think of. And those are the people that I reach out to for the month. I have a couple lists in my Doe app that are like that. Okay. These are people I needed to reach out to. And so even if I have five minutes, I can go right to that and I can send messages. Um, and he talks, you know, be a crusader when you see a need, fulfill it. If you see something in Plexus where you're like, gosh, I just learned about ease and it was really insightful to me, go make a video and put it in the page. Or Elizabeth and I had this call and it was really helpful for me to hear X, Y, and Z. I bet other people need to hear this too. Go make a video. Um, you find out something really cool about an ingredient like hydrate. I haven't even dug into hydrate. I've just kind of, you know, glanced at it. And I'm like, man, these are some good ingredients. I need somebody to do a training video on why hydrate is so good. You guys hint, hint, somebody do it. Um, <laughs> and just doing that, being a volunteer. Hey, I can make a graphic. Hey, I can set up the call. Hey, I can make the zoom, whatever it is like volunteering, and working, I think that's more like with our individual team. So, you know, I have my leaders, Lauren has her leaders, Jaggy has her leaders. We all have our leaders working and we have a great thing going on right now with that communication and stuff happening. So we're all volunteering for little things and working together. And then at the end, it's all, it's all done. It's all completed. And then growing the action habit. So I just re would refer back to the Slight Edge book, Atomic Habits book and remembering those things. And if you weren't around for the slight edge or atomic habits, like get them on audible, read them, pick them up, whatever way you get that into you. Cause it really does tie well into this chapter. Um, and that ideas just don't equal success. Like there are idea people and then there's action people. So the good thing is that I'm an action person and my husband's the idea person. And so <laughs> we eventually get a lot done. <laughs> so anyway, that's what I wanted to share about chapter 10. And I'm going to hand this all over to Miss Sharla, if I can unpin myself. There we go. All right. Thank you. Okay. So I am doing chapter 11 and the title of it was how to turn defeat into victory. And, um, Elizabeth and I didn't do this strategically about splitting that up. We just kind of said, Hey, you know, how about I do chapter 11? Hey, how about I do chapter 10? Um, and honestly, I didn't even know what either of them was about at the time that we split it up. And I'm so glad that I got chapter 11, honestly, because this stuff has really been on my heart lately. Um, I really feel like God's been speaking to me about it. And uh, so I just, I love this chapter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about at the end of the chapter, um, he does like a little bit of a summary. And so there were five points that he talked about. So I'm going to talk about the five points and add a little bit of meat on it. So number one was study setbacks to pave your way to success. So he gave an example of um, Mr. Skid Row, Mr. Mediocre, and Mr. Success. So he talked about Mr. Skid Row. Um, basically, the concept was if you look at maybe an average person, um, uh, you know, like a homeless person or something like that. So I'm not, I'm going to quantify this because I know he doesn't mean somebody with mental illness or somebody who's temporarily homeless um, because they just had, uh, you know, a lot of terrible situations happen. He's talking about a person who's chronically and has had a, a life sustaining, um, you know, their life sustained in a homeless atmosphere. So that's what Mr. Skid Row was. Um, Mr. Mediocre is the person who's just kind of lukewarm, just kind of going through life, um, you know, doing, doing some things, but maybe not having a whole lot of goals. And then you've got somebody who's extremely successful. So um, he talked about those three people and everybody in every one of those situations, every single one of them 
they come from different backgrounds. They can come from, um, you know, so different growing up backgrounds, different intelligence levels, different education levels, different race, um, different age. So it, everybody in every single one of those categories is completely different. But one of the biggest difference that they have, he says, is the difference is their response to defeat. So there's a lot of similarities there, right? They, they could either be the same age, um, they could come from the same background. Uh, there are people who are on, you know, who are um, down on their luck, who were raised in a poverty um, stricken, you know, home. Um, somebody who is a, at a mediocre stage in life, they can come from a poverty stricken home. Um, somebody who's successful, the same thing. They can come from being dirt poor and be extremely successful. But the thing, the key was that the, the response to defeat. So whenever they came to a situation, somebody who's successful, when they came to a situation, they looked at it differently than the other two. They didn't look at it as it knocked them down and kept them down. It was more of like a stepping stone or, or, or a stepping stool. Um, that's what they looked at defeat as. And he talked about one of his um, friends who was a successful businessman and he, you know, he worked hard for seven years trying to build his business. And he went through a lot of hard times, a lot of hardships. And one of the things he mentioned was during the first six months of him trying to build his business, he lost 10 years worth of savings. I, that's huge. I mean, honestly, could you imagine like losing 10 years worth of savings in, in a matter of six months? There would be a lot of people who would just want to just give up. Uh, but he didn't and he became extremely successful and what he said to his friend was he said to him you know i'm sure this took a lot out of you and i loved his friend's response his response was no it's not taking something out of me it's putting something into me instead i mean talk about a, a great perspective to have i mean that's amazing to me that he would have that kind of perspective um after you know that many years of hard work and then finally attaining success so the, the um, phrase that he used was salvage something from every setback. So I love that phrase, salvage something from every setback. So in other words, when we, when we experience a setback, what we need to do is we need to shift our perspective and shift our mindset into looking at it differently. How many of us have heard the saying, a setback is just a set up for a comeback? Right. I love that. I love that little saying. Um, so like his phrase was the same thing to me. It was just a really catchy phrase that I was like, you know what, that's really good because with every setback, there's actually something good in there. You did something. Um, what I tell my girls is mistakes um, that mistakes are life's greatest teachers. Honestly, uh, if you learn from them and change your behavior. So mistakes are not a bad thing. We can make mistakes in life. We can have defeat in life. What, what the key is, is if we can learn from them and then not repeat those same mistakes, that's what's gonna set us up for success. So number two was have the courage to be your own constructive critic. So seek out your faults and weaknesses and then correct them. So one of the things he talked about was us being able to um, self-examine, right? To be able to look at ourselves and say, okay, what did we do well and what can we improve on? Uh, and he was saying, don't be critical of yourself in a destructive way. Like, don't look and say, oh my gosh, I'm horrible at this. And, um, you know, I just stink at this or, yep, I'm never, look what just happened. I'm never going to amount to anything. We're not supposed to get down on ourselves, but what we can do is it will help us if we can examine ourselves, not blame others, um, but look at ourselves and say, what can I do better? Uh, and like I said, I, I love the fact that if we can look at ourselves and say, what are we doing well, keep repeating that, and then what could we improve or what's a different way of doing some things. So number three is stop blaming luck. Research each setback and find out what, what went wrong. So, you know, a lot of people, if we um, aren't doing really well, then we say, oh, it's just, you know, it's just bad luck or something just happened or something like that. We tend to blame it um, on something other than ourselves because <laughs> none of us really likes to blame ourselves, right? Um, but instead of looking at it as blame, again, what we can look at is we, we just can look at it as a learning tool. So not many things happen with luck. You can, by happen chance, be walking through a parking lot and find a $50 bill on the ground. 
that's not going to happen that often. Um, but what can happen often is if you are diligent and you try to make something happen, um, that's what's going to lead you to success. So we can't keep looking at it and being lucky. So like I'm going to gear it towards Plexus. So if you're just posting and you're just posting and you're just posting and you're just hoping and wishing and hoping that somebody's just going to approach you about it, you're putting the work in. You are, you're putting the work in, but you're almost relying a little bit more on luck that they're going to just come to you. So really, if you want to be successful with Plexus, yes, post, yes, stay consistent, but you have to reach out. You have to intentionally reach out. I don't know how many people I have had say to me, um, you know, when I've reached out to them and said, Hey, I don't know if you see my post started taking this supplements are amazing that they have said to me, yeah, I've been thinking about asking you about that but they hadn't asked me about that. They hadn't reached out to me because I made such an amazing post. Um, it was the post that got their attention, but it was my reach out that caused them to join and try it and, and you know, use something that's actually gonna be life-changing for them. So it, it, what, it's not just luck. We can't just base things on luck. We actually have to put the work in. Uh, number four is blend persistence with experimentations. Stay with your goal, but don't beat your head against a stone wall. Try new approaches. So he talked about a young author who had 62 short um, fictional pieces and he had not sold one. So he was persistent. He kept writing his stories and writing his stories, 62, and he was still after it, but he had not sold one story. Nobody had published it yet. Um, and so what he did was he recruited this, the author to try to help him with it. And the advice was, to change it, to change what, how he was writing it. So is it, I believe it's Albert Einstein that they said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, uh, expecting different results. So you can't keep doing the same thing. Yes, you wanna stay persistent, but you can't keep doing the same things over and over if you're not getting results from it. So if you're getting results, you have to stay persistent. We wanna keep doing the things that's reaching people. We wanna keep doing the posts. We wanna keep doing all those things, but you have to do something different. If you're not, if, if it's not working anymore, then you have to change it up. You have to get creative and you have to think of different ideas um, that you can do to try to reach people. Uh, and then, you know what, collaborating with other people is a great way too. If you're like, hey, I, I, I you know, co collaborating with your upline, going to your upline saying, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. It's not working. Your upline will help you because your upline has been there and your upline knows what they're doing. They're, they're, you know, they're higher than you are. They've attained a little bit more than you have. They've been doing it longer. And so they've got wisdom to be able to impart into you. So if you feel like you're stuck, if you're being persistent and you're just not getting any traction, talk to your upline because they're, they're, they're there to help you and they want you to be successful. And the, the thing that I love about everybody on our team is really our heart is to help others. So we wanna help others get healthy and, and we wanna help those who have signed up underneath us. We wanna help you be successful too. You know, I know Elizabeth's heart, she, she wants everybody underneath her to be successful even more than she is. You know, so I, I love the heart of our team. So anyway, don't just keep doing the same things. Try to, try to get creative and uh, do something different. And then number five was there is a good side in every situation. So what he said, his quote was, all things do work together for good if you'll just develop clear vision. So that is exactly like Romans 8, 28 that says all things work for good to those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So I love that because they will work for good. If you're doing good and if you have good intentions, it will work for good. And one thing that I wanted to wrap up with was, I told you this has been on my heart a lot lately. Um, and uh, something that I, I just spoke a message. Some of you know that I, my husband and I pastor a church too. So I'm a physical therapist, just like Elizabeth. Like she said, we went to school together. Um, I'm a Plexus ambassador and my husband and I pastor a church. And we, I just recently spoke a message um, that had something to do with this. And it was that it talked about part of my message was talking about the Israelites wandering in the desert. So if you're not familiar with the Bible, the Israelites were um, a, a group of people that were God's people. And he brought them out of this horrible slavery that they were in in Egypt. 
And he was taking them to a land that he had planned specifically for them. That on the other side, there was gonna be, it was just gonna be an amazing land um, where they were gonna be wealthy and have everything that they needed, but they had to cross through a desert first. We all have seasons and moments of deserts in our lives. Um, and so they had to, they, they were supposed to cross through this desert, but they were grumbling and complaining and disobedient. <laughs> and because of that, they had to wander in the desert for 40 years. And a lot of them ended up dying in the desert, <laughs> which is terrible. Um, but, but the hope of this story is you don't have to die in the desert. Like there's three things that you can do. We all have desert seasons in our life, right? Um, so you can either, you can either stay in the desert and you will eventually shrivel up and die, um, which we, none of us want to be there, or we can walk through it and get to the other side, which if you just keep walking and you just keep plugging through, you will get to the other side. You will. Or the third thing is, is you can change it. So you can change it by changing your perspective. The Israelites actually created a secondary slavery. So they were released from slavery supposed to go on to the promised land and they actually created their own secondary slavery because of their mindset their thoughts and their grumbling so you can take your desert season you can take your defeat and turn it into victory by just changing your mindset and looking at it as like i said like a stepping stone the the thing that he said one of the last quotes that i wanted to leave you with was find the lesson apply it and then look back on defeat and smile and i'm just going to leave it there so, all right, let's open it up for some, for some more comments. I wanna hear what everybody has to say. There were amazing things. So I know that you guys have stuff to say. There was so much stuff that I had to stop myself. <laughs> So we've got people who have stuff on their minds. Who's got something to say? Okay, I'll start since no one is talking. Um, so many of you know that every year, and maybe some of you don't, I choose a word for the year, and this year it's do. Um, and my verse is 1 Corinthians 16, 13, and 14. And the last part is, let all that you do be done in love. And I loved the grow to action habit, the first one, about being an activist and being someone who does things, be a doer, and not a donter. <laughs> That's not a word, by the way, <laughs> but um, I mean, this, that applies to absolutely everything. And yes, like Elizabeth said, if you did not get the chance to do the slight edge or atomic habits with us, um, double dog dairy to listen to it on audio or go back and even just listen to our book clubs. They're all in the recordings and the guides um, because it really does come down to doing. It's doing the good for ourselves and being a product of the product and being um, someone that is trustworthy in the process, right? Um, and then it's also being a doer on the business side of it and consistently doing the things, the IPA. There's a whole list of things we should be doing all the time um, because without doing, <laughs> nothing gets done. Um, and without consistency, we don't grow in the process. So there's my takeaway for chapter 10. And I like chapter 11 too, um, but chapter 10 was my favorite. And I'll... Um tag on to uh, Nicole, my uh, favorite chapter was chapter 11, because I <laughs> will just, I'm like, this fits perfect. I am always saying to my kids, I'm always reflecting back at myself, okay, this didn't work, or, you know, we came across this obstacle, or this failure, or whatever, and I'm always saying, okay, one, failure is lessons learned to what did we learn from it and how are we going to implement it? Because we, if we don't reflect on it, if we don't change it, 
we're going to repeat ourselves and we're not going to grow and we're not going to change. Uh, very easy, I think, in life in general to get down on ourselves. Um, when things don't go our way or, you know, things we rely on, luck, so to speak, uh, it's very easy to get down on ourselves. So if we look at it from a different perspective as lessons learned, as, you know, um, how to grow and, you know, take it to the next step. I think with that growth mindset, I really tried to instill that into my family and into my life. And so chapter 11 really spoke to me quite a bit with those. Yeah, that's good. Thanks, Rochelle. And I, I was trying to thank Nicole too, but I think I muted myself. I don't know if I actually said anything, but I love hearing from both of you guys. You both have great insights. So I just, I love hearing what you guys have to say. And I love how you um, relate the, you know, things from book club into your, you know, from what you've done at church too. Um, I just love hearing that correlation and that connection. And I don't know, it seems like every week you're like, I just spoke about this on Sunday. I just spoke about this. <laughs> and I love that. I'm like, oh, your small groups is following like, <laughs> your, your Bible study is following book club or vice versa. <laughs> it's just, it's just so, it's just awesome. It's just, I love hearing it. And I love hearing the correlation. And I yeah, wish I, I lived closer so I could go to your church. Oh, me too. <laughs> I don't know if it's like the, which came first, the chicken or the egg. I don't know if it's like plexus stuff going into church and devotions or if it's the other way around. I have no idea, but I love it because it, it does. It kind of correlates together. <laughs> All right. Who else? What else do we have? I'll talk next. I definitely do love you know, how everything intermixes. And I agree. I think they're all together. The church and plexus just go very well together in making ourselves better people for ourselves, for Christ, for all of it, for the people we're going to help. Um, chapter 11 really spoke to me in just how, you know, we really need to learn from our mistakes and from our defeats and just how you go about like raising all of that really affects it. Because I find in life, like, Yes, I make mistakes. Yes, life's not perfect. But if we don't take that opportunity to learn from things, then we're going to continue to do that. And we're never going to have a better life. We're going to be forever stuck in this cycle and just not getting down on yourself that often. I'm like, especially with kids, I'm like, oh, well, that didn't help us, you know, get the kids fed. Like, let's try something else. Let's, you know, try a different technique to maybe tomorrow we'll have better sleep. Maybe tomorrow we'll eat a little bit more. And it's just continuing to find things because life just always changes too. Often, if you find one thing that works perfectly, you know, you have one perfect month for your Texas team and you meet all your goals. Sometimes you do the same exact thing the next month and it, you know, things are different. So it's just continuing to do that reflection, continuing to not beat yourself up when things don't go perfect, but always turning around and making it a learning moment and going from there. Yeah, so good. So I, I and that, that's exactly one of the things that I was thinking of when I was reading this chapter is, you know, at the first quarter, um, we were all rocking. I, I, you know, I would, so many amazing things were happening um, on my team personally. And then um, last month, no lie, I had I think I had like five or six goals that I wanted to hit and I hit zero. <laughs> like I hit zero of the goals that I had set for myself. And so I'm not going to lie. I got really discouraged for a little bit. Um, but again, you know, we can all have a little pity party for a little bit, but we just can't camp out there. Um, and then we just got to keep pushing through. So I had to change my mindset quickly and say, you know what? No, I, I planted a lot of seeds that month. I was pouring into my team that month. I was helping build their leadership skills. I was learning leadership skills. So yeah, so just the, the mind frame and not getting down on ourselves is, is really important. So thanks, Melissa. And Melissa really is like very, very good at pulling the good. I mean, we had converse, I worked today. And so I got to see her face in person and I was like sharing a little bit. She's like, well, now you can do this. And now, and I'm like, yeah, yes, you're right. Yes, you're right. You know, she's really good at constantly pointing out the positives and learning something that maybe wasn't 
that great. And I, the other aside that I realizing through this whole book club discussion, like I quit brain dumping, I quit writing stuff down because it was all in my mind, the same do IPA, do the laundry, school, the kids print their stuff, whatever, nothing was really different. And so it was all just repetitive in my head. And I'm like, there's no point in writing this down. It's all the same thing. But then when I sat down and wrote stuff, I realized that there were like, call this doctor, do this little thing. So there were these other things on top of the norm floating in my head that probably were bogging me down, but they were just little things here and there. And so instead of kind of acknowledging them, I was just trying to remember them. And so it really was freeing when I filled, like, I have this big notebook, like, uh, before I busted out my remarkable, I was just using this um, before it came in the mail. And I filled, like, two pages, you guys, of, like, stuff to do. And some of it was just dumb, like, have the boys clean the bathroom upstairs, have the boys pick up their room or or whatever. And so I think that we just, that reflection, that thinking and seeing our progress is really important. And I think when we are in something that's repetitive, being a therapist is repetitive. I mean, basically we're like, I'm sorry, you're hurting. Let's do these exercises. Here's your home program. Um, kids, it's wash, rinse, repeat all day long, even as they're getting older. And then you have plexus, which is still like messaging, following up, messaging, following up, posting, adding value, you know, and it's all good. I'm not saying it isn't good, but it is very repetitive. And so when we can look back and say, Hey, this message. And so that's why we, that's the other reason you need to talk to your upline. I was talking to Sharla, like, well, I don't remember when it was the last time we talked. And I was like, when you're on the phone, that's when these things come out. And she's like, Oh, okay, send me that. I'm like, okay, here you go. And it was just a simple sample message. But if we're not on the phone having conversation, then you don't, that stuff doesn't come out as easily. Um, it can in messenger and stuff when you are talking back and forth, but it's not the same. So anyway, get on the phone with your upline. I have a calendar. So that's been really freeing for me. Cause I, instead of when are you free? When are you free? When are you free? When like my calendar has the spots available and then they sign up. So if you're looking at how to logistically do that, you might want to look into the Calendly, Calendly link thing, Calendly, it's a calendar sign up thing. So anyway. I love the tips that you give to Elizabeth. You've got such good, uh, You've got such good tips. And I know you've been doing this long enough um, that you've had to learn how to be organized and doing things like that. But man, you've got really good insight. I'm glad you're my upline. <laughs> All right, what else do we have? You guys are amazing and you have amazing things to say. Let, let me encourage you to, what you have to say might help somebody else. So even if it's something little, you don't have to feel like you have something amazing to say, just something that you might say today might help somebody else. So I would really love to hear from some people who don't typically speak up too. I'll say something. <laughs> it might not be the most profound, but um, I really liked chapter 10. I feel like even though I've been doing this for four plus years, I always benefit from hearing like action breeds action, action breeds confidence, because I find that even after four years, sometimes it's like, okay, I have to sit down and I've got to do some work here. And I don't know if it's fear. I don't know if it's, it's probably not fear, but it just, it's like, I'm not taking action. So then once I do, it's like, oh my gosh, that took so much less time than I thought that it would. It's almost like I become overwhelmed by thinking it's going to take longer than it, than it should. Anyway, right in the very first page, he says, nothing comes merely by thinking about it. I don't know if, if you guys can relate, but if you're like, so I work outside of 
the home. I'm a physical therapist as well. If you guys don't know, and I'll be thinking about plexus all day, like in between patients or while I'm with patients. Cause I'm like, man, this person needs plexus. I'm thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it, or I need to reach out to that person. I need to follow up with that person. And so it feels like I've been working all day working plexus all day, but I haven't actually been taking the action. So if that is you, or if you find yourself doing the same thing, um, that almost can become overwhelming because it's always in your brain, which is why brain dumping is super important. Elizabeth just talked about that, but just sitting down and taking the action. And this is what I've been doing the last couple of months, just even setting a timer or just doing it for an hour, you can get so much accomplished in an hour. And if once you start, you just get on a roll with everything anyway. So it never takes as long as you think it's never as scary as you think. Um, later on in the chapter, he's talking about the paratroopers that are like afraid to jump out of the plane if they're waiting too long to actually do it. And that's the same sort of thing. If we put something off for too long, it becomes scarier and bigger and a huger deal than it actually is. And if we actually just sit down and do the thing, it's not that big a deal. I feel like I talk about this all the time, which is why I almost didn't share, but like even something as silly as folding and putting away laundry, like it doesn't have to be plexus, but we put off these tasks all the time because we think it's going to be a larger deal than it is, but we just need to take action. And then that action breeds more action. So that is what I have to share. Thanks, Lauren. That was awesome. There's a, there's a saying that says, what is it? Like a dream without action is just a wish. So yeah, make, dreams can come true, but a lot of it takes action to get there. Um, is anybody else, did anybody else feel, um, the story, like the college student and he was like, oh, I'm gonna, oh, I didn't call my girlfriend today. I need to call my girlfriend. Oh, I need to, oh, well, I'm going to play ping pong, ping pong ball. Now I'm sweaty. Now I have to take a shower. Oh, now I'm hungry because in, and then he's like, I'm going to read the book at one o'clock in the morning, you know, like. I've done that my whole life probably, Um, but that's where brain dumping and that, well, the time blocking, right, comes into play and setting goals for our day and really learning to be disciplined to do the thing that is most important and needs to be done then and what is the most urgent, you know, because that is important. There's an old, old, old video we should put it, we should make sure it's in Rock Your Purpose. It's from Rochelle Osborne and she has like a grid of like four blocks. And so there's important and urgent, there's important and less urgent, there's whatever, the four titles. And so like figuring out what tasks in our day really fit in those boxes and then acting accordingly, that's really a a big deal. And where that whole principle comes from is well, where I heard it also, like as a book was Procrastinate on Purpose by Rory Vaden. And he talks about like prioritizing our time and our tasks, like procrastinating on purpose isn't necessarily bad, right? But as long as you're procrastinating, like folding the laundry over paying the bills that are due or doing the task that's most important and do. And he really also, this is another like aside, but he really talks about um, doing, setting things up that might take more time to set up, but are huge time savers in the long run. run. Like for instance, automatic bill payment, setting up your bank account to pay all those bills automatically might take two and a half hours to set up. But instead of doing these bills every month and you have that set up and then you're saving like, hours upon hours by the end of the year. Um, And so compounding that time is really huge too. So as you can see, I've worked really hard to become as organized as I am. (laughs) And I still feel like I have a long ways to go, but um, I, that's, you know, Charlotte's like, oh, you're so organized. Well, not really. I mean, yes, I am, but because I've worked really hard and worked on systems and, you know, atomic habits, you're failing because your systems suck. That's can result in a lot of failure. So.
Oops, I don't know why. Do we need to start calling on people? <laughs> I'll go. Okay. Um, so I couldn't go in the beginning because Charlotte gave a sermon and I was like crying about it. But every time Charlotte speaks, I cry. So every time I wanted to talk, she just started talking and then I couldn't chime in. So thanks, Charla, if you're on here. Um, and then to what Charla said about everyone having something to say, and then Lauren spoke, needed to hear that. <clears throat> because I, to be completely honest, have been like kind of in that little desert thing. I was doing so good. I mean, I'm still doing good, but like, you know, you have those seasons where you just feel good. Like everything's going smooth. You're getting, your people are responding. You're signing people up. Your team's doing all their work. Everything's just working. Like, oh, I have all, I have time in my day for everything. All my house is cleaned. My kids alive. Like all these things, like everything's great. And then all of a sudden it just, you either have a season where everything's just like boom, boom, boom. Like, oh, this needs to be fixed. And then family members, like health issues happen. And then I've been sick for like two months. Not like it's just like on the down low, like morning sickness sick. So I've just been sick like 24 hours of the day for two months. And I'm like trying to learn how to manage a business because there's pregnant women with nine kids, okay? And they're still running these like million dollar businesses. I'm like, how do they manage all this and cook food and this and that? But yeah, so I've been in the desert, I guess you could say for like a month, I feel like. And my business is good. I hit Ruby. This is like, I'm sorry, I'm not even talking about the book right now. I swear, like, I need to just brain dump before I even come to book club. But I'm getting back on all of that stuff that you guys have been talking about. Brain dumping and all the stuff from Atomic Habits. That was like, um, like the best, most helpful book for me personally to get my crap together was that book. Because like Elizabeth said, I am the same way and I need to be super intentional on being organized um, with like a calendar and all that stuff. And basically I didn't come on here to say anything specific about the book, but just that everything that you guys said did speak to me and I wanted to kind of back up what Sharla said. So yeah. And that you'll, I'm coming out of that funky season, I guess. I wish I could wrap it into a sermon like she does, but I just can't. Uh, Jade, you're amazing. I love you. I love hearing from you every time too. You, you are rocking it. I'm just telling you, I know you feel like you're in a desert right now, but you are absolutely killing it. So don't look. talk too much, Charlotte. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> well, and I got to say, congratulations on the down low. <laughs> Super excited for you. So, Thank you. oh my gosh. Well, thank you. You're I, like I said, you you're killing it. You're doing awesome. So, you know what? Everybody who's on this call, you guys are doing the things. You're here. You're doing it. It's going to pay off. Just keep doing it. All right. I think we've got time for just a little bit more. Who's got something else to say? Elizabeth said we might have to call you guys out. You don't want that. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm wearing the AirPod thing. So it's a, a little bit different, but um, okay. So Aunt Charlotte's church is Eastgate Church. <laughs> you can catch her sermons online because I watch them online on the treadmill all the time. Um, so anyway, I wanted to get on here and just say, you guys did a fantastic job. Uh, I love this book. I love these two chapters. Um, I love the part that he said about the author in the 62 book. 
that one really hit home for me because I feel like I'm just constantly just doing the same thing over and over and over again. And I just keep telling myself, consistency, consistency, you're going to get it, consistency. And then when he said that about the author, I was like, I could write 62 books and not do anything. Like, <laughs> So when it comes to Plexus, um, you know, keep posting, keep reaching out to people. But it was really encouraging just to be like, okay, definitely try something new if it's not working. If you're in, you know, kind of a funk, like Jade said, um, to just keep going and change things up and be creative with it. So good job, you guys. Yeah, good stuff, Sam. Thank you. I, you know what? You, you, everybody's got to have their own little personal cheerleader. I think mine is Sam's. And I think everybody needs a Melissa in their life too, apparently, because Melissa is so optimistic. Everybody needs a Melissa in their life too. <laughs> Okay, I think we've got time for one more. One more. Saving the best for last. Who's last? All right, I'll jump in here. I don't know that most of you know me, but my name's Steve uh, Beverly and Jack here on my upline. And uh, it's a great book, great for everything. Lots of truth being spoken throughout the night and, and throughout the book. Um, I do the brain dumping too. I have to. I, ha I manage a team of nine and just there's constant things that come up. You'll be in a meeting and then you write something down. And if you don't refer back to that, it'll just be lost for the day. And then um, taking immediate action too is another um, awesome thing. Just a quick example. I had an intern come up to me today and say, hey, uh, you know, my truck needs a new gas cap. Um, how do I take care of this? And we just acted on it right there and said, here's the phone number. Call my secretary. She'll give you a, the, the credit card over the phone. Go over to the hardware, uh, to the auto parts store. Just take care of it. So um, thanks for sharing, everyone. Great information. Thank you, Steve. That was great. Great encouragement. I appreciate you jumping on tonight and talking. So I love that. Thank you so much for being brave and jumping on. All right, Elizabeth, I'm going to let you have the last word. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to be a puddle of tears. So um, thank you all for getting on. I think that was great. We have two more chapters next week, and then we'll be moving on to our good leaders ask great questions, which is really awesome to piggyback off of this, you know, um, because oftentimes what I'm seeing in my, my leaders chats and things is, okay, you know, you're, I'm getting a question and I'm like, well, we need to ask more questions. And it's kind of, I feel like it's, I feel like I'm the annoying mom, like, Hey, can I go to the mall? And I'm like, well, I don't know. I have more questions, right? I can't answer that. Like I want to know all the details. And so, but really, and I think that's another skill that we've learned as you know or that we learn doing this business is asking more questions you know um and so it it's really beneficial and I remember Debbie used to say well ask more questions I'm like I don't what am I supposed to ask I, I don't know what to ask you know so and now I'm like oh I have questions so it really does come and really you guys this business is something that we're learning you can grow as you learn you can earn as you learn um truly you truly can and we have and i just can't reiterate enough like how much resource we have at our fingertips i reached out to a woman that i met and i was like hey you mentioned some hormonal issues and different things like i don't know if you've ever looked into plexus but it's really helpful for like helping to balance some of that out and while you're waiting for the surgery the doctors are recommending she's like well i did plexus before and it worked for like a month and then it just quit working. And I was like, and I was very nice. I was like, oh, you know, I, I have, I wonder, I said that could be due to so many things. Like, you know, it could have, it could be detox. It could be needing to adjust your usage. If you ever want to revisit that, I'm more than happy to revisit that with you. Cause I don't want to push and be like, oh, well, your people probably didn't help you. Right. And she really does have a lot on her brain. And so sometimes we have to really drip that this opportunity and this, these products are really something that can fit into a busy life. Um, and again, doers get things done. And so remembering 
not to prejudge. Like I was not a candidate to start a business. Hello. I was working, teaching. My husband was in school and I had four little kids. So I was not the one that was looking or the prime, like, Hey, I'm sure she wants to add more to her plate kind of thing, but because it's doable and because we can work in chunks and because we can see huge gains from the efforts that we do put in, it made it all so worth it, you know? So don't prejudge. And we're going to learn more about asking questions and then (laughs) we're going to wrap up our book. So thanks you guys for getting on. I'm going to stop it.